So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In this video, we'll be studying the timing of writing the book of Isaiah, its context, who the prophet Isaiah was, and we'll dig into this pretty well-known verse, Isaiah 41 verse 10. So if you're up for that, then stay tuned. Hello friends and family, I'm Hannah of Hope and Future Bible Devotions, giving you encouragement and godly wisdom with Bible context and life application. Welcome and if you're new here and that's what you're looking for, consider subscribing. Before we start with everything, I'd like to give a shout out to Walter Strong III for requesting for this verse to be studied in context. Let's first talk about the context of the book. The author was Isaiah himself. The events in it were during the decline of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, and it happened in the shadow of the Assyrian threat. The period that Isaiah prophesied in Judah was 740 to 681 BC, and he did so during the reign of four different kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. In the Old Testament, God sent different prophets, and in this case, Isaiah, to give his warning to the leaders of Judah to repent and follow God. During Isaiah's ministry, the people in this region have already seen the destruction of their northern neighbor, Israel. But still, they did not heed to the warning. And that was the irony of it all. The more Isaiah warned the people, the more their hearts were hardened. But Isaiah already knew that this would be the outcome because God told him. And the the hardening of their hearts would ripen them for what was to come. God's message through Isaiah was to tell them of judgment because of their rebellion, which would come through their conquerors, Assyria and then Babylon. But also, God wanted Isaiah to tell the people about hope that God would fulfill his promises. There are many prophecies in this book, and one of them was in Isaiah 6.13. If even a tenth, a remnant, survive, it will be invaded again and burned. But as a terebinth or oak tree leaves a stump when it is cut down, so Israel's stump will be a holy seed. The tenth in this verse were those who have gone through the trials during the Assyrian Empire and the Babylon exile, but would come back to Israel. From these people or the stump, there will come a new branch where David's family would come from, and Emmanuel will be born from a virgin. He would be the suffering servant, but another day will come that he would be the one to make all things new and set things right. Fast forward to Isaiah 41 verse 2, it talks about the king from the east who is King Cyrus II of Persia. Through him and the Persian Empire, Babylon fell, and the remnant among the Israelites were able to go back to Israel just as Isaiah 6.13 said. In these incidents, God shows that He is in control over everything. What He says will come to pass, and He is the God of justice. God didn't reject the Israelites, but rather because of their rebellion, God disciplined them through the Assyrian Empire and the Babylon exile. But in the end, God also used the Persian Empire who conquered Babylon, and King Cyrus II was more lenient to the Israelites, and he allowed those who wanted to go back to Israel to go back. In Isaiah chapter 41, God was speaking to the Israelites, and he addressed them as his chosen one. I know that the title of this video only says verse 10, but it would be better if we read the whole thought God was saying, which is Isaiah 41, 8 to 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the very beginning, God chose the Israelites through Abraham as the medium where other nations would come to know God. Not because they deserved it, but God just chose them. They failed to do this, but God had another plan. He sent Emmanuel to save the world from our sins, and now all who believe in him can be called his chosen people. Now we have the responsibility to make God known in the world. And well, it's so easy, right? Not 
The stubbornness the nations and even the Israelites back then is either the same or worse among the world and even in believers now too. Skeptics ask for proof of God when all they have to do is look around them or open the Bible with an open heart. There are so-called Christians who compromise and there are times when it's hard to distinguish us from the world because we've become so desensitized. Talking about the Bible being timeless, right? But God calls the believers not to be of this world. We are called to be different. And to those who are faithful, God says, do not fear. For what? For being seen as different, being made fun of. Don't fear the hardships you are facing. Why? Because God says, for I am with you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Just as God allowed the Israelites to go through exile and captivity, God allows us to go through trials, through uncertainties and disappointments. But the objective is to refine us and turn us toward God. And in the future, when Jesus comes back as King, we will reign with Him forever. Now my question for you is, how has God shown you that He is your help? I really want to know, so comment below. My answer to that question is in my testimony. So if you want to hear about that, then check out this playlist. Or check out this one if you would like it. In God, we have a hope and future. Keep your eyes on Jesus.